Good afternoon from Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, kind of noisy. All kinds of maintenance work is being done here at the carpool lane um, at the school that my oldest daughter is. Um, you know, I was thinking. Um, I teach collegiately. I'm. I've taught at quite a few colleges. Um, and at the present school I'm at. I'm thinking that there's got to be one or two of us, but I know for sure that I have never pledged for fraternity. Um, I've never done it. Um, I'm thinking that I'm one of the few that have never done it at this particular institution, but I, I've never done it. And that reminded me of the first time that I really had any serious encounter with a fraternity. Um, although I haven't pledged, my first time would have been so I had I moved constantly um, in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, the first time I was ten miles away, but then I read something. I'm not sure if it was an ad or whatever, but uh, but you know, ten miles away is clearly too far from the university, especially if you have no car, right? Well, what had happened was, um, I, um, found out that right on campus, um, a frat house was, um, a fraternity house was, you know, um, renting out rooms. And so I figured I'd take advantage of that. I figured I'd take advantage of it, and, you know, it was like, great. You know, it was $200 at the time, which was, you know, that was definitely, um, well, kind of within my um, purse once the financial aid came in. <laughs> but, but, but at any rate, um, and so, so I, took it, I took it on. Now, just in case you were wondering, and, of course, you see me here now, um, just to let you know, I'm not going to divulge the name of the fraternity, um, but if you are wondering, it is not a divine nine uh, fraternity. So, um, you know, so just in case you are wondering, so don't worry. Um, and that still leaves plenty of fraternities um, that it could, couldn't be uh, as well. So at any rate, um, so I meet with these people, you know, and I'm sitting in there and they're um, in the room. Matter of fact, it was the first place I ever watched Monty Python's uh, Search for the Holy Grail. I never, I never seen it before. And, you know, they were pretty cool people. You know, I don't remember a lot of, frater um, you know, profanity. And, of course, you're a good person even, you know, I mean, you could be a good person and have, you know, profanity. But I'm just saying it wasn't very laden, seemed to be very relaxed, down to earth, chill. Um, you know, I was thinking, well, you know, everything I've ever heard about fraternities must be wrong, you know, and, you know, they were pretty cool guys. Uh, matter of fact, I think there was a young lady from Argentina or something like that. I won't give out her name. Beautiful lady. I say this platonically. It was none of my business, but, but she was, you know, she was younger than I was, I believe. Um, but at any rate, she lived there as well. So... Everything's cool, right? I went to bed. I woke up and was about to go to class. Um, I believe that would have been music theory. Um, I woke up and I and I was about to go to class and <laughs> lo and behold, um, how long that table was about between four feet, four to five feet across. And maybe four and a half feet across, something like that. Not a single piece of the top was visible. And you know why? Because it was in completely, I mean, it was a circle. Um, so about four to four and a half feet, maybe in diameter. Every single inch of that was covered in silver beer cans. I then realized that my work was ahead of me. They parted hard. Dudes were like hitting their faces on the sidewalk, saying, dude, I hit my face on the sidewalk. Well, yeah, no kidding. 
I mean, they were partying like party could never. I mean, all kinds of nasty stuff. And, um, and, and you know, gosh, only knows what else. And then there was a, a dude that was clean shirt and he, he was telling these dirty stories um, and so on and so forth. And I was like, oh my gosh. Um, if this party, um, you know, if this crazy um, fraternity um, stereotype um, isn't on the level, this was not the fraternity to disprove that. <laughs> I mean, you know, because like the first day I was thinking, hey, you know what, I might even join a fraternity. But mm -mm. no, 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 not with these guys. Um, no, 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 no. <laughs> I was out of there in two weeks. I mean, even though, I mean, think about it. I had a free, um, <laughs> I had, um, you know, you know, the utilities were free. I was right on campus, but uh -uh. anyway, uh, but that was that was interesting. Now my guess is, you know, I, you know these guys probably have wonderful connections, and um, you know my guess is that almost all of them probably graduated anyway, and and probably you know grew up to be very outstanding people. I mean, I'm 46 years old now, and my guess is some of these people may have been teetering on 50. Matter of fact, given the average age of someone at the University of Mexico. Um, you know, my guess is that some of them may be past 50 now, but, um, whoo, <laughs> boy, that was baptism by fire. <laughs> anyway, um, take care of y'all. And, um, yes, yeah, about 91 here if you're looking at my head, but, uh, take care. Bye-bye.